everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I want to talk about one of the most valuable tools you can have in your writer toolkit, and that is failure. So yeah, strap in, this is your trigger warning. This one might be a little rough, like legitimately. If you are in the throes of failure right now, if things just aren't quite going your way, this one honestly might be a little bit too raw, but I'm approaching this from a hindsight perspective. I'm further along in my publishing journey and I'm looking back on some of my failure and I'm realizing the skill set that I developed pushing through those publishing setbacks, setbacks being a less charged word that you can use for it, that now I'm far better equipped to survive the publishing industry, I think, I hope, to hopefully be pleasant to work with, to do good work. And it's not just like, oh, you fail, you get better. You only fail, experience setbacks in writing and publishing and get better if you respond to them in an appropriate way. There's a right and a wrong way to respond. The wrong way, I've covered it in other videos. I've talked about giving up on books. I'll link that down below. That's a huge part of this actually. Giving up or temporarily shelving something and moving on to something new is really important for growth. And I'm gonna talk about a few other kind of mistakes, common mistakes that people make in the face of failure. But first, I want to talk about some of those skills that I have certainly developed through pushing through setbacks and I've seen others developed that really serve you once you do finally get that agent and get that book deal and then are looking to write more books and get more book deals. The first thing is your ability to come up with new ideas, to restart, to try something different, to pivot as you need to pivot in order to keep going. Writers who face a lot of setbacks realize and understand it's not just one idea, it's not just one book or even one or two, it's many ideas. You learn to flesh out, to develop multiple potential projects, write multiple potential projects, and be able to kind of move in the direction that's going to be right in the moment. You learn to be flexible essentially as an idea person and a book writer. A huge part of this is that you particularly have to learn how to develop commercial ideas if you're in the space of selling books, selling them first to publishers and then getting them in the hands of readers. You learn kind of how markets work and what people want. You learn to lean into your strengths around that. And the more sharply commercial you can be, honestly, the better shot you have at kind of forging forward and continuing in the industry. Not everyone is a commercial writer. I'm not talking about just like very obviously commercial work, but even the most talented literary writer still has to understand how to approach things so that people want to read them. And that's what you have to develop when you experience setbacks. If you discover people don't want to read my work, why? You have to do some soul searching about the why, which there are a couple other aspects of the why. It's not always the commercial nature of the idea, but you definitely learn to be flexible and multifaceted when it comes to ideas and writing projects. And this is going to help you if your first book doesn't sell on sub. This is going to help you if your publisher rejects your option proposal. This is going to help you if you need to go back out on sub to sell a second or a third or a fourth book and you and your agent need to come up with the right project. Having lots of ideas and being flexible can only work in your favor. The second skill set that you definitely develop through setbacks and failure is being able to handle criticism, uh, negative feedback, and literal rejection well and creatively. It's not just like, I mean, handling it well is a huge part of it. You need to like learn to process those emotions, process them healthily, process them privately. A huge part of this is just professionalism. Holding back those biggest emotions, especially when they're negative from say your editor or your marketing team or whatnot, it's not never expressing those ideas, but figuring out how to express them and communicate yourself clearly and effectively so that you can 
get your way a lot of the time. But what I see a lot of writers do who haven't learned to process those emotions and process it helpfully and move forward from it, like learn to move forward from it, is they will explode with big feeling, they'll have really rocky relationships in publishing agents or editors or whatnot because they're always explosively reactive, they'll dig their feet in in the face of criticism and it, it honestly in many cases refuse to edit or be ineffective at editing. Which feeds into my next skill set that you have to develop as you push through setbacks and failure that this is the one that's going to serve you more than any other skill to do well in publishing and survive in publishing and that is self editing. I mean, I talk all the time about how important revision is and that like no first draft is going to be published. You're always going to have to do work. And it is true. You can be an author who loves drafting more than revision, but you can't never develop any self editing skills, competent self editing skills. That is going to be how you get into a situation where you can end up with a relationship severely soured with an agent or an editor because they basically realize you are incapable of effective editing. And when that happens, you can be fired as a client, you cannot get another book deal. In very extreme cases, you can have your book contract cancelled. And then generally you can develop a reputation. That is definitely something that happens as an author who basically digs their heels in and can't fix the book. And that's not something any publisher wants to hear or, or agent really. It's about being willing to dig in deep into what is wrong with your story, be okay with the fact that things are wrong with your story, and then come up with concrete and creative solutions that you can actually effectively execute. This is all of the craft stuff that you have to learn by doing. It's uh, how to edit a character arc, how to fine tune character motivations, throwing out entire characters, deepening your world building, fixing pacing. I mean, pacing is a huge one. And it's basically, if you don't really learn these skills and learn to be honestly almost harsh with yourself when it comes to editing, you can definitely end up in those situations I talked about once you are on the other side with either an agent or a book deal. And once you develop a reputation for being really bad at editing, it does tend to follow you. The fourth tool that you definitely or should develop from setbacks and failure is how to write more quickly, how to draft cleaner, and basically push yourself to write more faster. Not always, but what I have found this comes from, I've definitely experienced this myself and I see it in others. It's, it is FOMO. When you have experienced setbacks and others around you, especially friends, are forging forward, it triggers this competitive impulse, uh, partly competitive, it's also partly fueled by just lots of sadness inside and a desire not to be left behind. And so you learn to push yourself so that you can catch up, so to speak. I definitely went through this and a side effect of doing that from a setback in order to try to push forward is I definitely learned some better, faster drafting skills, which then helped me on the other side once I had a book deal and I had to draft a book too on a tight deadline. So like, uh, that is one particular skill. Not every writer develops it through setbacks and failure, but if you do, honestly, it becomes helpful. It's not about speed drafting in four weeks, but learning to write a good book in six months or less is a skill. So if, if you are a writer who spent a year or two or more on a book and then you experience a setback from it, failure from it, you usually don't want to spend another couple of years on a book. It, also, as you get more effective at writing quickly and kind of being less precious about ideas and being flexible with ideas because these all tie together, it makes it easier going forward for future setbacks, which helps you with the fourth thing in your skill set, which is kind of a cousin to the learning to deal well with criticism thing. It is learning your own weaknesses, particularly your emotional and reactive weaknesses, kind of how you literally how you face failure so that as you face it in the future, you have the tools and the skill set to 
do better with it, honestly. It's part of what I said about like not being the person who throws a tantrum with your agent or your editor or so on. This is part of that. You're gonna learn what's gonna trigger you to kind of panic or react and figure out who your support people are. Who are the people that you can go to who are the best at helping you brainstorm so you can come up with those creative solutions. You develop a deeper bench of critique partners because let me tell you, when you face setbacks and failures, there is a point where you go, maybe I have to expand my critique partner circle. Maybe the people who are currently reading my work love me and love my work, but aren't seeing what I need them to see. So you expand your circle. Well, later, <laughs> when you're facing a problem with your publisher and you have to bounce an idea off someone or get a fresh reader, you have those people to go to. Part of this actually, at least for me, has to do with your agent as well. If some of those setbacks and failures are experienced with your literary agent, not selling on submission, doing an R&R &R and not selling a no from acquisition, so on and so forth, you kind of develop this skill set with your agent. You learn to trust each other and be able to better support each other through those setbacks, which helps you later, makes you a better team. It creates that professional bond that, again, is going to shield you at the further level so that you can send a lovely nice email to your editor even though the thing is really upsetting you so that your agent <laughs> can address the thing or at least so that you can cool down for 48 hours and then deal with it. But if you never experience those things and learn to deal with them healthily, the first time it happens to you, you might fire off an angry email or like have a hissy fit on Twitter or what have you. So privately experiencing failure when the stakes aren't quite as high is what I mean. Well, failure at querying or so on and so forth. You learn all of the skills you need so that when it happens at a much higher level with higher stakes that you handle it a little bit better basically. Okay, so I already kind of mentioned it. So those are like the things that I thought of that I thought were really good skills that you pick up through pushing through setbacks and failure, and they make you better at writing and publishing. But it really depends on how you respond to those setbacks and failure. All writers experience failure, but not everyone reacts to it or learns from it in a productive way. So specifically when it comes to learning an editing skill set, what I've seen happen a lot that's kind of like a danger zone for authors. So there are a ton of factors that go into success in the writing and publishing industry, and I think it is important to consider those because I say it all the time, like, if the market's wrong or luck isn't on your side, you shouldn't beat yourself up. It's not always that you're a bad writer or the book is bad. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. But conversely, if when you experience those setbacks and failures, this is especially at the earlier stages, this is querying and trying to get an agent, if you always blame what is happening on external factors, the market, luck, people just don't like me, whatever it is, you're less likely to look inside, to look internally, to look at the book, to look at the writing. And this is where I see some writers end up being kind of stagnant in terms of their writing quality, skill, craft, etc. Even if there are external factors, it is always worth going back to the book and looking at what you have on the page. Is your writing a little clunky? Could you work on developing specific aspects of voice or visual writing? Can you push yourself on show don't tell? Can you learn how to do a really effective pacing edit? Do you need to up your stakes? Is that the skill that you have to sharpen? whatever it is. And, you know, hopefully you've got some concrete responses in your queries, you know, from agents. But if not, it could be you seek out new critique partners, you enter a mentorship contest, whatever it is, you have to be willing in the face of failure to look into yourself and your writing and go, okay, I've revised this book as much as I can and clearly something's still not working. I'll start a new book and try to pick up and learn new skills writing and revising that one. And if you're actively always doing this, it still could take three, four, five, six, seven books, whatever it is, or it could take three, four, five revisions on a book. But you're moving forward and you are developing that skill set. And it is slow and steady, by the way, and it does not stop when you get an agent, a first agent, or even a second agent, or even when you sell your book. 
I look back now. I'm in year seven since I finished my first complete draft of a novel slash got uh, my first agent and I am in year three since I sold my first book, two since one came out, but I'm editing my third book for publication and writing a fourth. I've had three editors on three different books. Two agents, second agent is the one who sold books. And I think about some of the specific ways in which I've improved every time because of some kind of failure or setback, having to get a new agent, not selling on first round of submission, writing a mess, of a first draft of a book too, and having to do a very serious developmental edit, series of developmental edits with a very sharp editor, who then also really made me focus on some of my weaknesses in a line edit. My new editor who pushed me really hard on one of my characters and had some brilliant suggestions and made my book so much better, but again, really made me look at my word choice and what choices that I was making. Now doing line edits with your editor, that's not a failure. You've sold a book, but you haven't nailed something and you have to push through to fix it. And you always have to be willing to look at yourself. Something that I see myself doing and I see others doing too that is important. This is kind of a side thing too. This is the non-literal failure part. It's really scary when an agent or an editor says, I love this, but, and then they throw some big edit ideas at you. Your first reaction is gonna be no. <laughs> Your first reaction is definitely gonna be no. And what I see a lot, and I've been tempted in myself, well, maybe you get another agent offer or you get a different editor offer and they offer you the easier road, basically. They say, I love it with very few buts. They are not suggesting a big edit. Now, sometimes the big edit is wrong. It feels wrong. It is wrong for you. And you shouldn't go with someone who doesn't have editorial vision that matches yours. But sometimes what this represents with the non-literal failure thing is you've succeeded on one level, but you've failed on another. And I encourage you not to be afraid of that work. I have found more than once in my experience that choosing the harder path, choosing the path where I had to basically accept that I clearly failed some aspect of the novel and forcing myself to take the challenge to fix it, that is when I really leveled up and I gained new tools for my toolkit. So long story short, look within and do not be afraid to tackle the hard work. Be very wary of either blaming external sources for why you're not successful or listening to high praise because it's what you want to hear. So I will leave you with a few R's that I find really critical for failure as your greatest tool. The ones that I think to myself all the time. Regroup revise, reassess, and restart. Don't be afraid of any of these four R's. You don't have to do all of them in the face of every setback or failure, but you should be open to all of them. Regrouping, which usually involves reassessing, where you're basically taking a deep breath and deciding how to forge forward in a new direction. Revise, literally revise your book. Reassess, sometimes you have to try to look at the whole situation from a new angle and it, this might be the case where instead of going, hmm, maybe the market's wrong, you look at your actual writing and restart. Sometimes you have to start over, whether it is the actual project or a new project. So what are some ways that failure or setbacks have helped you develop new skills? Let me know down below in the comments and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And I will make more discussion style videos about aspects of writing and publishing. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.